Hey, uh, today I wanted to talk about um, how abuse affects the custody process. I'm going to turn my phone volume down. Um, and as always, I have my notes posted up right next to me. The reason I wanted to cover this is because I realized I've covered a lot of sort of how to's, but not a lot of sort of what to anticipate. And there's really nothing that you can anticipate in child custody court just because everything can be, it can go either way. It really can. The whole point of my channel is just to prepare victims of domestic violence as much as I possibly can. So today we're going to be talking about um, how domestic violence affects child custody process and cases um, and essentially just some really basic, basic information. So we're going to start with custody because most of my videos are tailored towards people who haven't even started a case, opened up a case, nothing. Maybe they haven't even left their abusers yet. Um, so we're going to start with custody because visitation is sort of the second argument and you'll see the more time that you spend in courtrooms the more you'll understand visitation is sort of the second argument the first need that the judge needs to take care of is to figure out the living situation for the kiddos involved um, so judges are supposed to take into account the parents history of physical or emotional violence towards yourself towards the kids towards really anybody if your abuser has history has cases has charges from um, domestic violence intimate partner violence uh, assault is another one against anybody else that's mostly public record and you can find that by googling if you type into google um, type your state and then e-file or like court records search for oregon it's e-file it'd be oregon e-file and then i can find any public record really at all um, for colorado it's colorado record search so it just depends on what state you're in but click around and see what you can find you won't find a booking date you won't find anything like that but you'll find court cases with the first and last name um, of people involved and you'll have to siphon through assuming it's a common name you'll have to siphon through and figure out who it is exactly um, and you you know your abuser best so you're, you'll be able to find that out you just it just takes a little bit of time so um, any criminal sexual assault against minors uh, sort of automatically eliminate the custody um, probability for the person involved and then um, also if the parents under an indictment of any aggravated child abuse child sex abuse or severe child abuse um, they should not be getting any sort of custody uh, while the criminal case is still pending because the judge wants to see the results of that if they give child custody to somebody who is facing charges for something that severe and then something happens to the child the judge's licenses are um, they're at you know a liability there's there's an issue there so the judge naturally just to keep you know self-preservation won't you'll you won't see a lot of judges giving custody to parents who are under a lot of active investigations so the visitation that I mentioned earlier that's the second portion of this so visitation it can be awarded to people who have committed serious offenses like um, you know felony strangulation is one that I can think of um, and I know that to us as parents it doesn't seem like it's common sense to give visitation rights especially maybe unsupervised to somebody who has a potential for such an extreme amount of violence um, but it really it's visitation so the way that the judge sees it is oh the kid will be over there for a little bit long enough to connect with that parent and then get back to their custodial home where it's safe um, and they've determined everything to be safe so it is hard as a mom to hand over your little one knowing full well that the abuser is potentially very very dangerous I understand that and I empathize with you it's just a part of the legal system the justice system that's behind the family court system that's extremely behind and that's why people like me are posting videos on it just to sort of raise some awareness so a lot of things that you can ask for in your child custody motion your first filing um, you can ask for supervised visitation by a responsible adult I see grandparents involved a lot 
for abusers who are systemically involved in the in the you know familial trauma trauma cycle um, maybe the grandparents aren't the best option because they were kind of why the abuser turned out the way they are so you can also contact an agency to do that and you can request that the visitation parent pay for those visits that's not something that you have to pay for. These are all things that you can ask for. I don't want people who file these custody orders, I'm sorry, these custody motions to um, to feel like they can't ask for oddball things because you can ask for anything under the sun. You can ask for the parent to confirm their favorite color before every visit. And while it may not go through, it you can definitely request it. And if you have enough justification as to why it's being requested, it's gonna be a lot, it's gonna be allowed. Um, you can also request things like the abuser go to counseling, maybe complete an anger management class, complete, you know, multiple parenting classes. I don't recommend that you request just one parenting class because a lot of those can be done online. In fact, in most states nowadays, you'll have to attend a parenting class, a co-parenting class when you file for divorce. Um, and that's just so the court system has a CYA measure of, oh, we taught them how to do this. It's a complete bogus class in my opinion. I know in my spare time, I actually went out of my way to take different co-parenting classes, free co-parenting classes, not only for my own knowledge and it really helped me in my ability to heal in my therapy sessions and things like that, but also because it gives you a paper certificate. So if you're stacking your case, um, which you always should be for future motions, it will give you a parenting certificate, a class certificate, and it's just one more document that you can submit with your future motions, justifying as to why you're the better parent. So it's one small tip that I found to be really, really helpful. Um, so because abusers will will sometimes mention that and say out loud, you know, over text message or whatever, you should go to a, a parenting class. Maybe you should learn how to parent. So if you have these certificates that are periodically, you know, annually renewed, or you go to one class every year, one class every six months, I think was my regimen, um, then it kind of defeats that argument for future court hearings because it's already date and time stamped. So maybe on I don't, I don't remember what exactly my date was off the top of my head. Of course, it's in my binder um, that I referenced in my earlier video. But, um, you know, maybe one day the, the abuser said, oh, you're, you're a terrible parent. You need to go to parenting classes and that will help you from being weird or whatever the accusation is that shouldn't be taken seriously at this point. Um, then you have, you know, let's say they did that June 6th. Well, May 11th, you already took a parenting class. So they kind of told you what their argument's going to be for the next hearing, which is that you're a, you're a crappy parent, right? So now you're kind of, you're, you're fighting a downhill battle at that time because you're already stacking your documentation before the accusations even happened. So before they happened, if you do it after they happened, then it kind of, I feel like it almost kind of holds it kind of gives what the abuser said more justification because they're seeing like, oh, they were they were scared of what I did, so then they went and took this class. So if you're doing it periodically before you even have the discussion with your abuser, it just kind of makes you look that much better, in my opinion, and preventative, which custody court is not preventative. Custody court is, you'll see things that happen after bad stuff has already occurred and it's very very frustrating i know but um you know you'll get through it as long as you're taking the proper precautions so the other one would be the another thing you can request would be um no overnight visits that's a request that you can that you can have um anything else that you feel like would keep kiddos safe, I'm sorry, I keep moving this anything <clears throat> else that you feel like would keep kiddos safe as well so if you have, you know, a third party, maybe a grandparent or something, but they are, let's say they have been founded for child abuse against the abuser in their, in the lifetime of at some point, then that kind of goes to show, okay, we can't work with grandma. Now we have to work with a, you know, DHS or an agency, which a side note, this is why I always have notes because I digress constantly. A side note, always, always, always be open to working with DHS. The only time you should 
be a little bit hesitant is when, I mean, I can't even think of a good situation. They really care for your kids' well-being. Not only that, but they have a ton of free resources available, especially for single parents, single moms, single dads who are just trying to sort of recuperate from a crazy chaotic divorce or child custody hearing. They have a ton of things. They have domestic violence victim advocates. They have legal help. They have um, you know, babysitting, food stamps, everything, WIC, everything you may need to make it day to day with your needs being met. Um, so it's, it's really hard. Um, so, and the other side note that I want to annotate that's very, very important, abusers tend to come and go through your life. So they may feel stable in their mood cycle for, let's say, two weeks. Um, so they they start visiting, you know, they start calling you, wanting to visit, wanting to take kiddo out of town, wanting to take kiddo out of state, which is worse. Um, if they have willfully abandoned the child for 18 months or more, the residential time should be limited. And that doesn't always have to go through a court system. Sometimes you can just wait till the abuser files a, a some sort of bogus claim. Usually it's like contempt for like, oh, she didn't let me see them. And it's way not like that. It's just they just took zero initiative to do anything. Um, 18 months or more is the safe line cutoff. Two years kind of allows for a lot of rights to be removed, like visitation rights. So my sort of I don't know how to say that without getting in possible trouble, so I'm not going to. Um, but 18 months or more is your key phrase, your, your key terms here. So at the 18-month mark, you should either be filing another motion after you know custody has been awarded to remove a lot of the extra visitation, so that way it just kind of can't be hung over your head, or, or you should be filing a motion to remove rights, period. Um, it's not okay for people to come and go from, from children's lives. It's not a good, it's not a good time. So, um, so yeah, so there you have it. Those are some of the ways that domestic violence can affect child custody. The key takeaway here is to make sure once again, that you're documenting everything. I literally cannot stress that enough. Every text message, every photo, every voicemail, everything everything because you're gonna start seeing if you you know I majored I got lucky and I majored in psych so I was able to understand mood patterns and um, you know behavior patterns and kind of work from there in order to succeed with the best odds if you're not in school for psych I don't I don't know what I would have done I don't know what I would have done if I wasn't going to therapy if I wasn't open to needing some sort of help and asking for that help I don't know what I would have done. So the best recommendation I can do is tell you that you need to document all of these things. The custody orders will always be reevaluated just because the nature of abusers is to not let you off easy. They're going to make sure that they use every weapon they can against you. And one of those weapons, unfortunately, are our kids. They will use them as what are called flying monkeys. Um, and if you don't know that term, just Google it. Um, family rule the family court uh, I think is the page but she is an attorney as well she gives out of Arizona she gives a ton of really 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 great advice and I will link one of her videos at the end of mine for you to click on um, to understand fighting narcissism in a child custody case many abusers are somehow dem they somehow demonstrate narcissism a lot of them because they don't seek help are not diagnosed officially and unless you have a master's in psych um, and you and you qualify with a proper licensure you cannot uh, diagnose them anyways in a courtroom which is why I also tell you don't use those terms in a courtroom do not tell a judge that your abuser is narcissistic that is not your qualification to determine so um, use these tips and tricks once again document everything. If you're not leaving yet, you need to be documenting everything and, and hiding it. I recommend hiding it. Um, because once, 
they're they're sneaky. Once they know that you're on to them, they are going to make sure that they are also documenting and stockpiling to make sure that you look crazy in a courtroom. And they are very, very good at it. They're very talented. Do not underestimate a narcissist or a domestic violence abuser to be the victim. You have to remember they've been a victim their entire life and it will not stop at you um, unless, you know, it, it might stop with you, but it's a long and hard fight. I've been in it for a few years now and I will continue to be in it. And that is fine because our best, our best interests are for our kids involved. So that's my sort of war cry, if you will. So anyways, you got this. Make sure to keep researching, keep documenting, keep everything stockpiled and hidden away somebody else's house if you have to. Um, but you got this. All right. I hope this helps. Bye.